Hello friends, today we are going to continue with the second part of cerebral palsy lecture. So in this lecture we will learn about the cerebral cl uh, palsy classification mainly. So whenever any uh, patient is coming to you for the diagnosis of cerebral palsy, so how we will come to know that this patient is having cerebral palsy. So what we have to see is if the patient is not having head control at the age of 3 months, if the patient is not having sitting at the age of 6 months, if the patient is not rolling over at the age of 6 months and if the patient is not having walking ability at the age of 18 months. Okay, now whatever the patient comes to us, he may be having uh, any age like if the patient is coming at the age of 4 months, so definitely we will judge only from the head control. And if the patient is coming at the age of 1 year, so definitely we will see head control, sitting and rolling over all. Yeah, so what are the milestones to be checked? It depends that when the patient is presented to you or whenever the patient is presented to you, what is the age of your patient? So based on that, we have to ask the mother or parents okay, regarding the achievement of milestones and we will decide accordingly. Now, there are a few signs suggestive of cerebral palsy. So this child, okay, uh, they may be having abnormal type of behavior. So they are not behaving like normal uh, other children of the same age. So parents will be noticing that uh, my child is something different as compared to other children. Now, uh, they will be having excessive irritability. So even with the minor stimuli, they will be angry. They will be having poor eye contact means uh, this type of the children they avoid to maintain eye to eye contact whenever you are calling them and whenever you are doing any effort of conversation with them. They will be having poor slip pattern. They will be having oromotor problems also so that will lead to some problems of uh, feeding also. They will be having frequent vomiting because of reflux esophagitis whatever they eat it may be coming outside by vomiting. There will be poor sucking, so sucking is very important for good nutrition for breastfeeding and even later on. So this sucking reflex should be good but this uh, children they are having poor sucking reflex also. Other is tongue retraction, so tongue uh, will not be protruded okay, outside the mouth for this type of the children. Then persistent bite, so many times uh, it is observed that these children they are biting themselves, okay, they will bite their lips or they will bite their inner side of the cheeks etc. Then they will be having grimacing, grimacing means it is ugly facial expression we can say, so why they are making this type of the strange uh, facial expression, so that may be because of some discomfort that is felt by these children. They will be having poor mobility obviously as compared to normal children their mobility will be restricted. They will be having poor head control so generally the head control is achieved at the age of 3 months. So before that if you lift the child you need to support the head but after the 3 months if you uh, lift the child you don't need to uh, support the head but for this children you need to support head also so they don't have proper head control they are having poor head control. They will be having head preference before the age of 2 years. So what does it mean? So many times it happens that uh, one side is paralyzed or weak. So for example, if the child is having left side weak or paralyzed, so child will always use right side. Even though you try to give something with left side, child will not use left side. Why? Because the child is having uh, paralysis or weakness on left side. So child will prefer any one side more as compared to other side. Why? Because the other side is either weak or paralyzed. And definitely there will be tonal abnormality. So either the tone will be more or the tone will be less. Means it is either spasticity or it is hypotonicity or flaccidity. Now which are the major deficits in cerebral palsy patients? So generally the primitive reflexes should be integrated with time. So generally in uh, cerebral palsy patients what happens that this primitive reflexes they are persistent they are not integrated. So instead of doing selective motor movement they will be always dependent on primitive reflex patterns clear. So this primitive reflexes they are present instead of integrating. So that is also 
one of the uh, sign that is suggestive of this cerebral palsy and that is a major deficit in cerebral palsy. Other deficits are there will be abnormal muscle tone and this muscle tone will be uh, strongly influenced by or affected by patient's posture, patient's position and movement. Okay, means the tone will affect this body posture, position and movement and the body position, uh, posture and movement, they will be also affecting muscle tone. There will be imbalance between the agonist and antagonist. So generally what happens when agonist contracts, antagonist will relax. When antagonist will contract, agonist will relax. So there should be balance. But here it is not in balance. So it will lead to fixed muscle contracture and bony deformity. So just imagine that bicep is spastic as compared to tricep. So the elbow will be remaining in flexion only. So the bicep will be resting in shortened position in most of the time of the day. So this bicep gets shortened position. So just because of this shortened position of the bicep for a prolonged period of time, there will be permanent shortening of the bicep muscle in our example. So that is nothing but muscle contracture. Now, after this muscle contracture, what happens that even our joint bony part, so we are talking of the elbow joint in this example, so that will be also deformed means after that even if the contracture is released surgically later on, so the elbow will be deformed clear. So initially because of this muscle imbalance, the muscle remains in continuous shortened position. This shortened position of the muscle will result into contracture and this contracture in muscle will be resulting into bony deformity. Then there will be impaired body balance mechanism. So there are more chances that child will fall many times when he attempts walking or he attempts standing also. Now few sensory systems they are also affected. So why we rely on sensory systems? So if we think of ourselves only, so we need good sensory system for good motor performance. Just for example, if I want to dance, so before I dance, I need to see the steps of my choreographer. Okay, I use the word I need to see. Okay, so definitely it is reason. If I want to walk first time in my life, so definitely I need to see that how the others are walking. Clear? So what I am doing, I am using my vision. Okay, if I want to sing a song or if I uh, want to take a lecture, so for that I must be having good hearing capacity because if I listen the music, I will be able to dance with more efficiency and with more coordination. Clear? But if I don't have proper hearing or listening capacity, definitely I will not be able to sing properly. Clear? So these are the uh, role of the sensory systems, those will be required for good motor performance. So which are the systems affected? So the vision will be affected, hearing will be affected and other sensations including superficial and deep sensations, they are also affected and this sensory loss will affect the patient's or child's motor performance. Now which are the associated problems? So they are seizures seizures means convulsions so convulsion means it is uh, one type of the involuntary movement okay it is involuntary movement sometimes this involuntary movement will terminate into temporary loss of consciousness also so seizures they are convulsions then mental retardation so here the iq intelligent quotient of the child will be less so it will be known as mentally retarded generally less than 90 behavior problem so generally the child learns a social type of the development personal and social development you know okay so these all are the milestones that the child will learn but here the child will not learn all these things so the behavior will not be social clear because the child doesn't know where to pass the urine when to pass the urine what should be uh, the behavior when the someone is present Okay, when uh, the behavior should be changed, when the guests are available at home. So all these are social behavior. Normal child is having all this idea that at present I have guest, so I should behave like this. Okay, I want to go for urination, so I should move to bathroom. So generally at the age of three years or more than three years, the child will learn everything regarding their 
social behavior but here the behavior will be also affected now uh, definitely because of this oromotor problems vomiting problems the nutritional level of the child will be also affected okay so they are not getting proper nutrition and just because of lack of mobility whatever they eat that is also not digested and it result into constipation now coming to the classification of cerebral palsy so there are four types of the classification so which are this different types as per the uh, reference given first based on severity okay so what is the severity of affection whether it is mild affected moderately affected or severely affected then second is topographical classification means how many limbs are affected one two three four okay based on the number of the limbs affected or the region affected the classification is given that is topographical distribution then it is about motor function clear so whether a child is having increased muscle tone decreased muscle tone based on that we will be having classification fourth it is gross motor function clear so what is the level of milestone development whether the patient is able to walk whether the patient is able to manage in community whether the patient is able to manage with some assistive device or patient is not mobile at all so based on gross motor function the classification will be there so these all are four classification based on severity level based on topography that is number of limbs affected and the region and depending on motor fluctuations like increased tone decreased tone and fourth is based on gross motor function so let us understand first one that is based on severity level so it is having mild moderate and severe so in mild what happens the child can move without assistance and all the ADLs are possible means ADLs are not limited means child is doing everything even though there is problem child is doing everything what the normal child does now in case of moderate the child may need some assistance in form of braces in form of medicines to complete the activity of daily life so that is moderate level of uh, severity then comes severe so generally the child is uh, having challenge in all his or her activity of daily life and generally the child is either wheelchair bound or bedridden now second classification so that is based on topographical distribution topographical distribution means how many limbs are affected here we will be having two terminologies generally we are using as suffix plagia means paralysis and paresis means weakness plagia means paralysis and paresis means weakness so first is monoplagia or monoparesis means one limb will be affected either by paralysis or by weakness okay one limb may be any of the upper limb or any of the lower limb also but only one limb out of four limbs will be affected second is diplegia or diparesis so all four limbs are affected but lower limbs are affected more as compared to upper limb then hemiplegia or hemiparesis means half of the body is affected so for example so left upper limb and left lower limb they are affected or right upper limb and right lower limb they are affected paraplegia means both the lower limbs they are affected okay paresis means weakness triplegia or triparesis means out of four limbs any three limbs they are affected by paralysis or weakness then double hemiplegia or double hemiparesis so here all four limbs are affected but one side of the body is affected more as compared to other side like the child will be having problem in all four limbs but it is possible that the problem is more on left side or right side then quadriplegia or quadriparesis means all four limbs they are affected equally now third classification is based on motor function so it includes pyramidal or spastic cerebral palsy so here the child will be suffering from spasticity and most of the cps generally about 90 percent of the cerebral palsy patients they are spastic cp then extrapyramidal or non-spastic cp 
So it includes ataxic cerebral palsy and dyskinetic cerebral palsy. Many times it is neither spastic nor non-spastic. Okay, it will be a mixed picture. Now based on gross motor function system. So it is as per gross motor functional system five levels. Okay, so this is very important criteria and based on that uh, the physician or surgeon or physiotherapist will be able to command to determine surgery treatment or some use of assistive technology. So here there are five levels. So level one means child is able to walk without any limitation. So walks without limitation. Level two, so child walks without assistive devices, but it will be limited in community means at public places it will be difficult for the child to manage okay like in school okay so child is able to manage at home but at school it will be difficult why because there will be many uh, other children also with uh, whom they have to compete okay like in stair climbing or descending in uh, pt lecture okay so child will be having limitation in community then level 3, so child is walking with assistive devices like child may use uh, ankle foot orthosis, child may use stick or walker, okay. So child is walking with assistive devices. Level 4, so child needs some transportation, okay. That is nothing but wheelchair, okay. And sometimes the child uses powered mobility. So powered wheelchair will be there, so which will be operated by child only, but at least it is uh, we can say it is limited mobility or it is having a requirement of transportation and level 5 so it is severely limited child is totally wheelchair bound child cannot operate wheelchair also or sometimes it is bedridden okay so it is severely limited dependent on wheelchair and sometimes even in severe cases the child will be bedridden clear so this is as per GMFS gross motor function system. Now you can see different photographs. So if the pyramidal tract is affected, so on the left side you can see there will be hemiplegia, diplegia or quadriplegia and on the right side you can see if the extra pyramidal system is affected, the child will be having either athetosis, dystonia or ataxia. Okay and based on that the classification will be there of cerebral palsy. Now what is spastic cerebral palsy? So it is the most common type of cerebral palsy as we discussed uh, in this video only. They are of 90% of all cases of cerebral palsy patients. So for example if you see 100 cerebral palsy patients so out of 100 90 will be of spastic type. What is the pathophysiology of spasticity? So I would like to tell one simple example that uh, if the students they are sitting in classroom okay and the lecturer is not available so definitely they will make noise okay but if the lecturer is present in the classroom they will be silent clear why because lecturer is working as inhibitory control clear so whenever the lecturer is available in the classroom they will inhibit the students for making noise okay they will not allow okay so here what is happening so as you can see in the diagram brain is sending impulse to the spinal cord spinal cord is sending impulse to peripheral nerves and from peripheral nerves it is supplied to muscle clear so the information is coming from brain from brain to spinal cord spinal cord to peripheral nerve and from peripheral nerve to muscle now just imagine that brain is damaged clear so actually what is happening there is no inhibitory control from the higher centers higher centers means brain so the lower motor neurons means peripheral nerves they will not be having any control over their firing rate okay so generally this firing rate by lower motor neurons will increase and just because of increase in the firing rate by this lower motor neurons muscle remains in continuous contraction so that is nothing but spasticity how to check spasticity so that is by fast passive movement okay there is no any other testing other than fast passive movement many times i have seen that many students uh, they are telling the child or any other patient of the neuro to perform active movement 
to check spasticity but that is wrong spasticity is checked by only one technique that is fast passive movement now this spastic cerebral palsy patients so if you combine this spastic cerebral palsy with topographical distribution means how many limbs are affected so most commonly we are seeing this types of the uh, spastic CP patient spastic hemiplegic spastic diplegic spastic monoplegic spastic triplegic and spastic quadriplegic now second is ataxic cerebral palsy so first of all understand what is ataxic ataxic is the word uh, derived from ataxia ataxia means what it is lack of coordination okay ataxia means it is lack of coordination and definitely when you don't have proper coordination you don't have proper balance also okay so coordination means what it is smooth accurate purposeful and controlled movement smooth accurate purposeful and controlled movement for example if i am eating biscuit so biscuit goes into my mouth only it is not going in my nose or it is not touching chin clear so that is example of coordination now whenever your limbs they don't have proper coordination the balance will be also affected okay and why this issue occur so that is because of damage to our brains motor control centers now children with ataxic cerebral palsy they have hard time controlling their movement why because they don't have proper uh, coordination they are suffering from ataxia so this people they are having shaky that is vibrating type of the movement and they struggle with precise movement precise movement means for example if i want to button uh, in my shirt okay so that is known as precise movement clear other precise movements their examples are writing problem okay uh, this writing will be affected uh, in this ataxic patients they will be having difficulty in grasping very small objects okay this ataxic CP can affect uh, their hands, their arms, their legs, feet, eye and sometimes even speech because tongue needs also coordination. For example, if I am speaking now, so my tongue must be having smooth, accurate, purposeful and controlled movement. Otherwise, whatever I speak, you will not be able to understand. Clear? So all these are the problems. Those are present in ataxic cerebral palsy patients. Now, what is the cause of this? So, we all know that uh, coordination is because of basal ganglia and cerebellum in our brain. Clear? So, in case of ataxic cerebral palsy, cerebellum is affected either before birth, during birth or even after the birth. Which are the risk factors for developing this uh, ataxic cerebral palsy? So, it is very common in the children of uh, mothers who are not vaccinated properly or they didn't have proper maternal health okay so during the pregnancy vaccine was not given properly or that lady has not taken care of her own health okay during the pregnancy so the children will be having high chance of getting ataxic cerebral palsy now the children who have been victims of abuse okay they are also having higher chance of developing ataxic cerebral palsy okay so for example if there is uh, domestic violence okay in many families we have uh, heard okay it is domestic violence so if the pregnant lady is also involved in this domestic violence so there are chances of getting possible brain injury and the child may be having chances of ataxic cerebral palsy which are the signs and symptoms of this cerebral palsy so there will be imprecise motor skill okay like buttoning writing grasping small objects will be difficult skillful movement will be affected then these people will be having trouble in walking and balancing they will be having issues with depth perception so for example if this child wants to uh, climb the stair okay so they will not be able to judge exact height of the step why because they are suffering from depth perception so exact height exact depth they will not be perceiving clear then there will be tremors tremors means it is rhythmic contraction of agonist and antagonist so that is nothing but one type of the involuntary movement in simple term you can say it is shakiness or vibration 
okay shakiness or vibration so that is nothing but tremor tremor means it is uh, contraction of agonist and antagonist but that will be rhythmic in nature now this people they will be walking with feet spread far apart so they will be walking with wide base of support so whenever you have child or any even adult patient walking with wide base of support so you suspect that there are chances of cerebellum damage in this patient now they will be having trouble bringing hands together so we can say that midline activity will be difficult for this child then they will be having unsteady gait because as your cerebellum is affected you will not be able to walk properly or steadily you will be leaning on any side clear if your right part or right side of the cerebellum is damaged you will lean on right side if the left side of the cerebellum is affected you will lean on left side clear so there will be unsteady gait then definitely they will be having problem in grasping objects especially small objects then they will be having over correcting movement so that is because of hypermetria so there will be overestimation of distance like if i want to feed myself so my hand will go into my mouth only but for this people they will be having over correction okay or over estimation so instead of the biscuit going into the mouth it touches nose okay so that is hypermetria or over correcting movement or over estimation of distance now they will be having trouble with repetitive movement also they will be also struggling with the speech okay as i told if i speak definitely the my tongue must be having smooth purposeful accurate and controlled movement so that is nothing but coordinated movement okay then and then you will be able to understand otherwise you will not understand what i speak okay now they will be having slow eye movements clear so the visual tracking will be also affected now another type is dyskinetic cerebral palsy so this means difficulty kinetic means movement okay so here uh, it is not major part of paralysis or weakness but movement is affected quality of movement is affected okay so it is type of cerebral palsy mostly it is associated with damage to basal ganglia okay so there are chances of this movement that is difficulty in movement or generally we call it movement disorder okay so that is not related to spasticity or weakness or paralysis but movement quality or control over the movement is lost or it is reduced clear and generally it is because of bilirubin encephalopathy or hypoxic ischemic brain injury this two causes will lead to damage to basal ganglia and the child will be developing this kinetic cerebral palsy now generally in this type of the cp patients uh, we will be observing hypertonia and hypotonia both why because the tone is not controlled by this patient clear yeah, so they are not under the classification of spastic cp they are not under the classification of hypotonic cp because the tone will be fluctuating okay so many times if you observe or examine the tone will be more and second time if you observe or analyze tone will be less now this dyskinetic cp okay it will be having further classification into choreoathetoid and dystonic type of cp now choreoathetoid cp means what so chorea and athetosis this two are uh, movements those are because of damage to the basal ganglia chorea occurs in distal joints and generally it is associated with hypotonia athetosis it is mostly occurring in proximal joints okay and it occurs under the cover of hypertonia okay so chorea means distal joints and hypotonia athetosis means it is proximal joint and hypertonia okay so it may be any one of this or sometimes it is combination of this two so it is known as choreoathetoid cp okay so it is nothing but involuntary movement and mostly it is affecting face and extremities means face and limbs now dystonic cp it is characterized by slow strong contraction okay which may occur locally also or which may affect whole body also okay in dystonia generally what is happening so there will be twisting movement or rotatory movement okay and that will end into some awkward posture okay so you can remember dystonia like this 
it is twisting or rotatory involuntary movement resulting into awkward posture clear now this is associated with extra pyramidal tracts okay in the basal ganglia or cerebellum they are affected clear so either there is injury or malformation to this above mentioned tracts or cerebellum now lesion to this is principally by hypoxic ischemic brain injury or bilirubin encephalopathy so that may lead to uh, malnourishment or damage or injury to basal ganglia or cerebellum now so if the person is having chorea so how it will be identified small rapid random repetitive uncontrolled movement okay and as i told chorea means it is generally affecting your distal joints and under the cover of hypotonia okay now when this involuntary movement will increase so they will increase during the emotional stress or excitement and when they will decrease so they will decrease during the patient's uh, sleeping time or when the patient is distracted to some other stimulus clear sometimes it is absent and sometimes it is less or it is reducing now patients they have problem or difficulty in maintaining posture and balance in day to day activity for example they are sitting standing and walking so in this all activities there will be fluctuating muscle tone and because of this fluctuating muscle tone they will be having difficulty in maintaining posture and balance now coordinated activities for example reaching and grasping may also be challenging now it's not like that only reaching and grasping will be uh, having challenge these are just examples okay any activity of the daily life will be having challenge okay in the life of this this kinetic cerebral palsy patients muscles of face and tongue they are also getting affected in case of dyskinesia okay and generally uh, they are having involuntary facial expression and they are having drooling generally of saliva now speech and language they will be also affected so generally we call it dysarthria dysarthria arthria means pronunciation this means difficulty so the person or child will be having difficulty in pronunciation clear so that is most commonly seen in athetoid type of dyskinetic cerebral palsy patient now another type that is hypotonic cerebral palsy so the name itself it is telling everything hypotonia hypo means less tonia means it is related to muscle tone clear so in case of hypotonic cerebral palsy there will be reduced muscle tone okay there will be reduced muscle tone now this hypotonic cerebral palsy is a very uh, less common type of the cerebral palsy patient clear so we can say that spastic cerebral palsy is more commonly seen okay on the opposite side hypotonic cerebral palsy is rarely seen clear which are the symptoms or observations of this hypotonic cerebral palsy patient so they are floppy limbs floppy means they will be very loose so if you give passive movement so you can feel no resistance at all so whenever we are giving passive movement even in the uh, neurological normal individual so we will feel at least some amount of resistance okay even though it is not spastic but at least some amount of tone we will be feeling so that is nothing but one type of the resistance okay but in this hypotonic cerebral palsy patients they will be very loose type of limbs okay so we call as floppy limbs like you can think of rope okay whenever you are bending uh, rope so you will not feel any type of the resistance so they are like hanging or they are like rope clear so there is no resistance that will be felt by examiner whenever the passive movement is given to this child the child will be having poor posture generally the kyphotic posture because the child will not be having proper sitting balance and the child will lean forward because of weakness of all the muscles generally this child he cannot hold up their head okay so uh, 
child will be having poor head control that we can say this patients they have uh, difficulty in walking okay just because of reduced muscle tone the lower limbs they are not capable of uh, maintaining this standing position or uh, walking capacity okay so they will be having difficulty in walking just because of muscle weakness definitely if the muscles they are having hypotonia so reflexes will be also diminished why because muscle it is a factor organ or it is uh, the responding organ in the reflex arc clear so even though your stimulus is strong but if the muscle that is giving response at the end of reflex arc structure so if the muscle itself it is weak definitely the reflex will be diminished speech will be also affected because tongue is also one muscle okay it is group of the muscles clear so definitely the child will be having a problem in pronunciation speech will be also affected just because of muscle weakness the respiratory muscles they are not also much capable okay so the child will be also suffering from breathing problem child will be having problem in swallowing also because of all this oromotor issues and uh, generally in this people the intelligence is not affected so iq may be normal okay it may be normal like other normal child okay so iq or intelligence is not affected now which are the causes of hypotonic cerebral palsy so there is damage to cerebellum okay now we have one exception we have always learned that uh, if there is damage to uh, upper motor neurons or central nervous system there will be always spasticity okay but that is not always like that for example if the cerebellum is affected so it will result into hypotonia damage to cerebellum will not cause spasticity damage to cerebellum will cause hypotonicity clear so muscle tone will be reduced in case of cerebellum damage now uh, whatever we learned like spastic cerebral palsy dyskinetic cerebral palsy ataxic cerebral palsy hypotonic cerebral palsy so in clinical setup it is not necessary that the child will be fitting into any one of this clear it may be having mixed type of the palsy okay so it may be combination clear so spastic hypotonic ataxic dyskinetic all these are we can say physiological type of the classification for cerebral palsy classification but clinically it may be mixed also so which are this common mixed combinations so spastic cerebral palsy may be having features of ataxic cerebral palsy also means the child is suffering in such a way that he is having spasticity also and ataxia also other combination is dystonic with ataxic flaccid with dystonic and more combinations okay along with this you will be having more complications more combinations okay so we can say that it is not fitting into particular single classification but it is mixture okay so it is mixed type of cerebral palsy and you can literally write in your case paper also that it is mixed cerebral palsy clear any question thank you